Hi, welcome to Trending at Money 9. I'm Karthik Malhotra. Well, a new buzzword these days is Indians investing in US stocks. That's been a new phenomenon and it's gaining quite a bit of momentum these days. In fact, the popular stocks until quite recently were the FANG stocks or the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix and Google. But a recent study by Vinvesta also said that other emerging technologies including blockchain and electric mobility are now becoming popular choices for investment among the Indian communities. Um, the US, the New York Stock Exchange's FANG Plus index has outperformed many other indices of course, the US as well as the Indian indices and perhaps looking at that trend is why Mirai Asset Mutual Fund has recently announced two new funds launching on the 19th of April, both of them tracking the FANG Plus index. Swaroop Mohanty is joining us today to tell us everything we need to know about these two new funds that he's launching. Hi Swaroop, thank you for joining us. First up, tell us you, what do we expect on the 19th of April, tell us about these FANG Plus index funds that you're launching. Yeah, this is our first uh, global ETF from our side and, and we are very excited about it uh, because the companies you are talking about are phenomenal. If you look at their size, their scope, the way they have grown in the last decade or so and what they have brought to the world is, is unbelievable. And as, as we speak, they continue to reinvent themselves, invest, reinvest in themselves and, and look forward to a changed world which you cannot deny that post covid all of us are indi as individuals are changed people when it comes to our needs and wants and the way we will look at life going forward will be completely different to the past and we believe these 10 companies are geared uh, to help us and aid us in our lives around you make no mistake you will try to avoid them but you cannot cannot avoid those companies featuring in your life perpetually going forward is our view Right. So uh, why so much fascination in the technology stocks? I mean, of course, we know that some of them are very, very household brands, but there are also uh, companies like Tesla uh, and Alibaba that perhaps don't have as much influence on the Indian investors mind as companies like perhaps Facebook and Netflix. Let me give you my own example. Like I am a first generation Apple iPod user. Right. I recently decided to get out of Apple because I thought there were other phones. I mean, I'll relate to Tesla on that when I come to it. But um, my life is music, so I can't get out of Apple Music at all. So so it's just, just about one part. It's not about a phone. Most of these companies, when you come to Tesla, Tesla is just not a car company. It's far beyond that. And you and I will agree that future is about electric vehicles and it's soon catching up. And then when they come to India, you will see a lot of Indian players also moving up. I'm sure there are other car manufacturers which are looking at, uh, you know, electric cars in, in, in their own way. But Tesla is a Tesla and, and it will be ahead of the curve uh, at all times. When you look at the car market today, one of the most exciting products in India is the Mahindra Thar, but it has inspiration from the Wrangler Jeep. Does not That does not bring down Wrangler Jeep or any way. But the fact is that we've got a Mahindra Thar is, is good for us. So that is what these companies do globally. And, and you know, when, when you look at me and Facebook, I've never been on Facebook. So I thought, okay, I'll lead life without Facebook till it brought over WhatsApp. Can I lead life without WhatsApp? No, I cannot. So, so when you look at all these companies, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Alibaba, all of them have impact on all our lives. And, and going forward, we do believe that the impact will only grow. Right. And uh, the numbers that these FANG plus 10 stocks uh, command are mind boggling, sir. In fact, just run us through these numbers. You were kind enough to share the presentation and we'll pull up the graphics as you as you tell us about them. But some of these numbers are absolutely mind boggling. So the FANG plus a uh, basket of 10 stocks is three times that of every equity listed on the Bombay Stock Exchange. I mean, just run us through these numbers, sir. Totally mind boggling. It's very difficult for us to comprehend because we are about 2.7, 2.8 trillion economy. And when you look at 10 stocks being 7.7 .7 trillion as market cap, that's like three times of our country is, is, is difficult to comprehend. And then when you look at their revenues, their revenues in excess of say 1 trillion, which is three times that of India's receivables in, in the last financial year. Just look at their cash balances, which is 500 billion, uh, which is almost 85% of what we have as a country. And, and then what you said is, you know, their net uh, uh, income of around, say, 180 billion or 179 billion, which is probably bigger than our entire entire equity market put together. So so that's, that's uh, very difficult to sort of comprehend. Hence, 
the opportunity hence the size and and uh, with this kind of money with this kind of size uh, uh, they are probably the third largest country in the world i mean put those things those numbers in perspective it will take some time for it to sink into any individual and that is quite natural right so uh, just help our lay investor understand the concept of fund of funds uh, i mean etf is comparatively simpler to understand but fof is something that has again started coming into into news only recently so for a lay investor what is an fof how does it differ from a regular mutual fund kartik i know i'll take some flack when i say this but that is the truth is that we for a long time been in this physical format of buying mutual funds uh, we've always believed that you know opening a demat account or uh, or the electronic form of owning units is a huge uh, deterrent to mutual fund investing but that has all been now uh, sort of uh, taken away by the growth of demat accounts that we've seen in the last few months or in the past one year opening a demat account is not an issue anymore or or the way the kyc and and those uh, processes have become very simplified so earlier what used to happen is when you looked at buying etfs since you had to have a demat account the etf market was restricted to only the demat account sort of uh, segment uh, so for people who are beyond the demat account segment the fund would normally launch a fund of funds which would fit in feed into this Uh, etf and enable people who do not have demat accounts to buy the same fund as this fund of funds would have the uh, fang plus etf as the underlying so it is just a mechanism to enable people who do not have an etf uh, uh, account but want to own this fund can own it through the fund of fund group. right um and how do how does the cost structure under taxation differ as compared to a traditional mutual fund does it cost the same or um, or is there a difference between both the way it is uh, costed the expenses as well as the taxation see typically the etf since it's passive investing and does not need a fund manager intelligence or research is always a low cost product so it will be in the same range that comes in the market in the 30s to 40 kind of basis points that is what this will be priced at and the fund of fund will go up to 1% uh, uh, so that is the cost uh, structure of these funds both of them and and uh, uh, we are looking forward to people investing in this yes one one big uh, caveat which i have to mention is that all international investing forms the debt taxation so it's a 3 year uh, long term again taxation which which is applicable to debt funds and that applies to this fund too um can i ask you what should investors expect as a return on the fang plus uh, index i see i mean it's a very uh, pertinent question when you look at the world post covid there is no doubt that you know uh, technology is taken over the world and and these are companies which are focusing not only on technology but what i like about these tech these companies is the amount of money they invest in themselves in their r&d all these tech companies all these 10 companies have continuously featured in the top 10 research and development input companies perpetually so they are continuously reinventing themselves investing themselves to be in the future from the day of the laptop to now artificial intelligence the world has come a long way and all these 10 companies base themselves on these sort of uh, 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 futuristic sort of mode to keep track not only keep track but to be ahead of the world at all points of time so i would say these 10 companies are a must hold for people's portfolios i mean these are companies which are now available to you so it's a good opportunity i would say to hold these companies first of all when you look at the future there is no denying that there is immense potential on this and and as we unfold i think uh, not holding these 10 companies could be riskier than holding these companies is my opinion from a portfolio construct perspective the only part which i'd like to keep people uh, informed is that is it a 10 stock portfolio it is an equal weighted 10 stock portfolio so all the stocks will get 10% weightage and they'll be rebalanced every quarter so a 10 stock portfolio comes with its its own risk profile which is slightly higher than not slightly higher it is significantly higher than a normal 50 60 stock diversified portfolio so please keep that in mind and that risk one cannot dissociate from this portfolio which is inherent in the product right but uh, there is also a counter view that uh, that one of the professionals from your industry in fact uh, gave me some time back 
and his opinion was that uh, you know um, rare view investing is possibly uh, the the strategy for investing in us stocks which means that historic returns have been fabulous but going forward the next decade apparently belongs to india so uh, do you think the timing of this fund is is correct i think see if you catch me online also i have always mentioned that tell india at your own risk india is not to be sold ever it's a country which is just getting into its own four and and the future definitely lies with india i have no doubt or debate on that right but when you look at portfolio construction and when you look at asset allocation there is definitely a space for uh, uh, allocation to these 10 companies please understand these 10 companies are not restricted to us alone they are now global companies and their revenues come from across the world so when it comes to these 10 companies Uh, not owning these ten companies could lead to uh, opportunity loss, like it has already happened. I mean, uh, you've seen what's happened to these ten companies over a period of time, and these are time-tested companies. So it is not when it comes to these ten companies. I would not, I would re- not restrict the story to only being U.S. or non-U.S. Anyway, not owning U.S. U.S. itself comes with its own risk, which I personally, as an individual, realized pretty late because I was caught on to this only India story. So, from a right. portfolio diversification and allocation perspective, there is no doubt or debate that a global allocation today has become a necessity. How much you allocate is a different question. That is a good discussion between the investor and the distributor or advisor. But not allocating could lead to further sort of misses, which has already happened in a lot of cases, including myself, in 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 portfolio construction. Sarup Mahanti, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Trending at Money Nine. That's a wrap on this particular edition. Thank you so much. Goodbye.